Hi guys, Olive here. Here today to bring you the next installment in my ongoing series of videos all about the 90s PBS Kids TV show, Wishbone. In case you aren't familiar with Wishbone, it was a half hour television show that was split into two different storylines in each episode. One of the storylines was a straight adaptation of a classic work of literature, some sort of a canonical work. And the other storyline was a real life modern, aka 1990s storyline that was focused on a family living in Texas with their pet Jack Russell Terrier Wishbone. And that real life storyline somehow related back to that classic work adaptation. In this series of videos I do here on my channel, I look at one episode of Wishbone per video. I compare it against the classic work that they chose to take on for that episode. I discuss what they chose to include from the classic work versus what they might have chosen to exclude. I discuss the moral message that they're pulling from the work and trying to communicate to the very young audience. And at the end of the day, I judge whether or not it made an entertaining half hour of television. In today's installment, we'll be looking at a very special episode of Wishbone. It's actually the first ever episode of Wishbone, and it's a two-part episode. Given that this is the pilot and it's twice as long as a normal episode, I'll be doing a more condensed recap of this two-parter that takes on Mark Twain's childhood classic, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. And the show calls this episode, A Tale in Twain. Let's take a look. What's the story, Wishbone? What's the story, Wishbone? What's this you're dreaming of? At the beginning of this episode, Wishbone and his family, meaning Ellen and her son Joe, are both introduced. And we're told that Ellen is writing a short speech for the upcoming neighborhood picnic. Joe, on the other hand, is itching for an adventure. And while he doesn't think he'll find it in Oakdale, Texas, he is holding a copy of The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, and he might just find it there. And so the book adaptation takes over, and it shows us that young Tom Sawyer, played by Wishbone, lives with his aunt, Polly. He's a mischievous lad, constantly avoiding his responsibilities in order to have adventures instead. He seeks out his friend Huckleberry Finn, who he's hoping will play pirates with him. Back in Texas, more familiar faces from the show are introduced, like Joe's closest friends, Sam and David, as well as Joe and Ellen's eccentric neighbor, Wanda, before Joe finally comes up with that adventure that he wants to go on. He wants to go to a section of the park that none of them have ever visited. It's supposedly haunted because there's a nameless grave there. Meanwhile, Huck and Tom have gone off to be pirates on Jackson Island, but they're gone for such a long time that everyone back home supposes first that they're missing and then that they're dead. When Huck and Tom come back home, finally, they inadvertently crash their own funerals. While the kids in Oakdale are still on the hunt for that secret spot in the park, Huck and Tom head to the graveyard in the middle of the night because Huck thinks it'll cure his warts. While they're there, they witness an act of grave robbing turn into an act of murder. The real murderer convinces the third man in the situation that he did it because he was so drunk and can't remember. Tom and Huck vow never to speak about what they saw. The teenagers back in Texas finally find that haunted spot in the park and discover that someone's been digging up the grave there. They decide to wait and see who shows up and Wishbone discovers someone with a shovel who does not look happy to see him. At the trial of the drunk man, Tom Sawyer breaks his vow of silence with Huck and testifies that he saw the real murderer, Joe, commit the crime. Joe then flees the courtroom. Both of these cliffhangers lead us into the second part of the episode. When the next episode opens, the Texas kids are being chased away from the grave by that man with the shovel. Joe's mom catches up with the three of them and brings them home. And later on, Joe tells his mother what they saw and what all happened to them. And he wants to take her back to that spot in the park so that he can prove that he wasn't making this up. Someone was actually digging up that grave. Now, back in the book adaptation, Tom Sawyer, of course, wants a new adventure. So he and Huck head to a haunted house to dig for buried treasure. While they're upstairs, the murderer Joe and a companion of his come into the house and dig up some treasure themselves. They almost discover Tom and Huck, 
but Chance saves the two kids. And Joe says he'll bury the fortune he just found in the number two spot under the cross. Tom wants to track that treasure down as soon as possible, but unfortunately he's busy the next day because he has to go to his crush, Becky Thatcher's picnic. After the event, he and Becky go exploring in the local cave. They do get lost, but Tom eventually finds an exit. And later on, someone tells him that he doesn't have to worry about the murderer Joe tracking him down anymore because Joe was found dead in that very cave where he and Becky got lost. That leads Tom to believe that the treasure that he wants to find so badly must be buried in that cave. The whole Texas crew make their way to that no-name grave, and just like last time, that same man is there and he's not happy to see any of them. But when he's pressed about what exactly he's doing there, he explains that the no-name grave isn't actually a grave at all. It's the buried valuables of an immigrant family who were forced to leave Oakdale years ago after their farm failed. He is the descendant of that immigrant family. He had heard family stories that this place existed. And finally, he came to claim his family's treasures. Wanda, the president of the local historical society, asks him to record his story in the town archives. And Joe's mom invites him to the town picnic later that day. The second part of this episode concludes when Tom and Huck find the buried treasure in the cave, becoming the richest people in town in the process, which they find actually kind of spoils their fun. And then in the real life storyline, Joe's mom, Ellen, gives her speech at the town picnic, which we find out is all about stories, a perfect ending to this opening episode. So let's discuss this episode. This is a little bit of an unusual one, as you can probably guess, because it's a two-parter and also because it's the very first episode of Wishbone. And as such, there were a lot of introductions going on in this episode that I, of course, being someone who's very familiar with this show, didn't really need. But it makes sense that they would need to introduce these characters at some point. And I think that's why they chose to make this a two-part episode. I could easily see these two storylines being able to be smushed down into a normal episode of Wishbone. I think it still could have been successful as a normal episode of Wishbone, but I think their intention was to give viewers more time with these characters, give us a chance to get to know them. But discussing this episode is also a little bit unique because I get to talk for the very first time about why they chose a specific book for a specific point. Pretty much all of the other books that they chose for this show are kind of random. I think it's just based on what they had at the time. I don't think the books are put in any sort of meaningful order as you go through this show. But I think they chose The Adventures of Tom Sawyer very intentionally to be the opening episode of Wishbone. And I think it was a really good choice. I think for what they were trying to achieve with this show, I think Tom Sawyer was a really good choice. And I say that because Tom Sawyer is such a quintessential boyhood kind of book. And I think the audience that they had in mind as they were making this show was made up of young boys. I think they knew young girls would watch the show and that's why Sam is such an important character. But I do think they were mainly trying to appeal to young boys. Whether or not they were correct in that assumption of who would be watching this show is an entirely different conversation that I will save for the retrospective video that I'm going to make once I've finished this project, because I obviously was a young girl watching this show, and now I'm a grown woman watching this show still. <laughs> but yes, based on the assumptions that they were making about who was going to be watching this show, Tom Sawyer is a good choice. However, it doesn't have the tidiest plot. It doesn't have the most cohesive story. It's kind of why this is called The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, because it's just kind of a collection of his adventures, as opposed to one really solid story. That more solid story happens in the back half of the book with the whole murderer thing, which is obviously what they chose to focus on and tie to the real life storyline very effectively, I might add. But by focusing on that part of the book, they didn't focus at all on the front half of the book, where all of his hijinks happen, where the mischievous character of Tom Sawyer is really introduced. 
And that means we don't get some really iconic moments from The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, like that whitewashing scene. Watching an adaptation of Tom Sawyer that does not include that whitewashing scene, that iconic scene, one of the most famous scenes in American literature, it just felt wrong. But they do give a good sense in this episode of Wishbone of the spirit of Tom Sawyer. And I've said this in recent episodes of What's the Story Wishbone here on my channel, that I think the purpose of this show was to give the viewer a taste, a teaser of what they can expect if they go and pick up the book themselves later on, which I obviously think they're hoping that the viewer will. But they do tone down a lot of the adventures of Tom Sawyer. They tone down the ancestry of the murderer, Joe, which I'm really glad that they did that. They tone down how he died. Things are a lot more gruesome in the book about the circumstances under which he died. It's also a lot more brutal in the book, just how dire things got for Tom and Becky in that cave. It's a very small moment in the show. It is not a small thing in the book. So they toned all of that down. But other than that, I do think they translated things to this episode very effectively. Now, when it comes to the moral message, which the show is normally trying to pull out of the classic work and communicate through both storylines, I didn't feel that this episode really had one. I think they were much more focused on introducing this cast of characters, getting you familiar with the way they do things in these episodes. So that's totally understandable. But I do think that there was one central message that they were trying to communicate through this pilot. It didn't have anything to do with the work of literature. It had much more to do with stories. And it came through in Ellen's speech that she gives at the end of the episode. Ellen's speech that she makes is all about stories and their power. And she brings up how the man who was digging up that no-name grave came to Oakdale because of a story. And it's really a great thesis statement for this entire show. Stories have power. Stories bring us together as people. Stories build community. Even the stories contained in the old dusty tomes sitting on a shelf somewhere in your house when you're a kid, you might think that those stories have nothing to do with you, but they can be just as relevant today. It was a lovely message and one that I agree with wholeheartedly. I think it was kind of the perfect ending to this pilot. And it does give you a sense of kind of what's to come for Wishbone. I think it does give you a really good sense of what this show is like. All the characters pretty much are very consistent. So this is a good introduction to them. Do I think it's the best episode of Wishbone ever? No, I think there are much better episodes to come later on, a lot of which I've already discussed for this project, and a lot of which I will still be discussing as this project continues. As I said before, I don't think it needed to be a two-part episode. I see why they did. I see why they wanted us to have some more time to spend with these characters who at the time would have been new characters to us. But if I were making the decisions, if I were writing these episodes, I would probably want the very first episode, the pilot, to be more in line with what's to come later on, just to make things more uniform. It actually makes me wonder if this show was pitched as an hour long show, but then they could only get picked up as a half hour show. I might have to look into that. But yes, I did find this episode to be very enjoyable. And I also think it was a successful episode, even if it was in two parts, and I personally wouldn't have put it in two parts. It was really nice being introduced to some of these characters that I now know so well. There was something almost very charming about that in my viewing experience. But as I was watching it, I was thinking, man, if the pilot is pulling on my heartstrings like this, I can't even imagine however long from now when I'm watching the final episodes, I'm probably going to be a mess. So those were my thoughts on this two-part introductory episode of Wishbone. If you have any comments or questions about anything you've seen in this video or about anything in general, please feel free to leave those in the comment section below. If you would like to keep up with what I'm reading or writing about right now, you can find me on various places around the internet, including Goodreads and some other social media platforms. The links to everywhere you can find me will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.
for Wishbone, provided by annual financial support from PBS viewers like you.